What's going on back here? Betting around the rim. Keith Irizarry with you. Sports Grid Radio, Sports Grid, Series 6 from Channel 204, MSG Networks. We are all over the place on your streaming devices. Friend of the program. Uh, we love them. Brandon Scoop B. Robinson. Uh, Mr. Scoop B. will be joining us in just one moment. I, I, I got to pick his brain on a few things. Now, I will ask him about Lonely Island, I promise, because I want to know if I'm a knucklehead for, for downloading that music. We love You know you know that like as a, a betting person, we look at streaks and trends, and I like to look at storylines from the show. So I'm going to ask him that question. I want to know what he thinks about Andy Samberg and Lonely Island. But I also want to dive into some, obviously, uh, some of the NBA storylines that we've been seeing um, over the last week or two. All right, do we have Scoop now? Are we good? All right, let's bring in Scoop. Uh, Scoop, are you a Lonely Island fan, Andy Samberg? And the reason I do this is because in Knuckleheads, we had uh, Steph Curry clowning Clay Thompson saying, I'm on a boat because of one of his outfits this week. Well, you know, you and I went to Hofstra. So, you know, during that time in Hofstra, I, I was I was introduced to it. I wouldn't say I was a fan, but I, I'm not against it. You know, during those times that McKeebs and some of those, and Dizzy's and some of those other places, they played that at Hofstra. So I, I'm familiar, may not be my go to but yeah I, i'm definitely familiar you just shouted out the local establishments over there that was awesome on hemster turnpike oh my god that just took me took me back took me back a little bit yeah <laughs> the, the, so so what happened was i admitted that i i like lonely island i mean listen i'm I like i mean tough week for rap this week and and the world with dmx passing and, and that was like that was my dude in 97 98 99 like and i know you love dmx also but it, it got me into a little conversation about lonely island and i admitted that i've downloaded like all of their albums and every once in a while i get into these moods where i want that fake rap and it's fun it's just a, it, enjoyable and they say crazy things and we laugh um what was the sentiment around the NBA with the the passing of DMX? Because I I know there were a lot of tweets out there and a lot of um just you know RIPs to DMX this week. Yeah, DMX was was definitely loved. It's interesting to see certain folks that were like younger than me, like in their late or later or mid twenties, talking about DMX and the impact. And it's interesting because you look at players now, like their parents listen to DMX, and it's, so it's interesting how much of a tweener he really was. But how much DMX lived his life to the fullest? And, you know, Kevin Durant was on a, a Twitter spaces the other day. I was live tweeting and he was just talking about how much impact uh, DMX had. Um, and talking to players via text, um, some of them were telling me how DMX was like on their playlist, to, to whether it was CD players or whether it was iPods, uh, going to AAU games and, and things of that sort. He definitely was an impact. He definitely was felt in the, in the New York metropolitan area. A uh, native of Yonkers, New York, and um, you know, even talking to people in Westchester that you know were, were lined up outside his hospital in White Plains uh, until his death, um, he, he had a lot of loyalists. And if, if I may, one of my favorite quotes uh, by DMX was actually, "The places that I've been, the things that I have seen, um, what you call nightmares, or what I have is dreams." And you know, you look at people in the NBA; the dream is to make it. The dream, the dream is to represent their family. You know, DMX died young at fifty years old, and uh, but he has inspired a whole generation of folks. And, you know, we all have dreams. That's why we're sitting here right now. Yeah. I mean, really like the, the quotes that you could put out there from, from DMX over, I mean, the fact that dude had what five albums, all of them started out number one on the, on the billboard list, right? You had two albums in one year. It's dark as hell is hot. And then, um, blood, uh, uh, what is it? My, my, um, uh, blood and blood, blood, blood. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, album two, both of them, both of them go platinum in in a singular year. Like, I mean, you yeah. put it all together. He was he was really a, a classic uh, hip hop artist, and he will be missed. Um, all right, let's do some NBA. And I thought the game of the week this week, and I know the the Suns ended up losing to the Clippers, but it was the Suns Jazz overtime game. I thought, and, and tell me if I'm correct. For the casual basketball fan, it might have been their first realization that these two teams are forces in the Western Conference. Yeah, definitely for the casuals. But for those who have been paying attention to the NBA throughout the course of the season, um, the Utah Jazz are a potent team, both offensively and defensively, uh, beyond be, behind the play of uh, Rudy Gobert, as well as Donovan Mitchell. Uh, but their supporting cast, whether it's Royce O'Neal, whether it's uh, you know, Joe Inglis, whether it's just uh, that supporting cast of people under head coach Quinn Snyder. But that overtime game, uh, Keith, to me, uh, lived up to every bit of its billing because 
Donovan Mitchell, in my mind, is an MVP candidate. And I think oftentimes he's overlooked because he is in Utah. Um, and I think when you look at um, the Phoenix Suns, uh, the addition of Chris Paul um, has, has made all the difference in the world, uh, playing alongside Devin Booker, uh, playing alongside just this young team. And um, I, I think that this is a showcase of two teams um, that could be a deep playoff run um, if it's utilized correctly. And, you know, looking at Utah, looking at Phoenix, I, I felt like I was looking at like NBA circa 95 when the Jazz and the Suns were playing at America West Arena in, in Phoenix and Paul Westfall, rest in peace, was the head coach of the Phoenix Suns. Like, it, you don't really hear Utah Phoenix much in, in, in deep playoff conversations nowadays. So it was a treat to watch. Yeah. You you just casually brushed over the Donovan Mitchell MVP topic. And, and I think we need to dive into that more. And I, I want to dive into your brain because yesterday – we, we had our market mover segment where we talk about uh, where the MVPs are. And basically, mm -hmm. FanDuel, it was essentially not available like two months ago for Donovan Mitchell. Like he wasn't even, he was an afterthought, right? And then we look at it now. He's still 100 to 1 odds. And we have a graphic. You, you'll be able to see this, I believe. Jokic and Bede, Giannis and Harden and Lillard and Doncic. And, and I wanted to make sure that Mitchell was there because he's 100 to 1. Twitter believes he belongs in that conversation. I believe he belongs in that conversation. And now I know that you do too. Why do you think Mitchell belongs in the conversation? Adopts Ferry Native by way of Connecticut. He's there because um, I feel like ever since Shaq said what he said to him, he's been on fire back in January. And aside from all of that, I, I just think that he's been growing exponentially uh, in his role with, with Utah. I, I think I've seen it in, in certain spurts. Like, there was a game, I believe it was like in February against the Clippers, and they lost. Um, and, and it's just there is something about Donovan Mitchell that reminds me a lot of young Dwayne Wade. I can't put my finger on what it is. I think Dwayne, I think Mitchell's uh, – there are some differences between their games. I, I post that, that, that thought on, on Twitter uh, during that game. Um, but I think with Donovan Mitchell, I really think that in a year where the Lakers have been dealing with injuries and, and could still possibly make it to the finals, it's been a treat to see a team not named Lakers um, do well. And you've seen Donovan Mitchell soar in that regard. And I think it really started uh, in the bubble last year, just the way he was playing. I mean, this was a team that was going toe to toe with the with with likes of the Denver Nuggets and the Clippers. The Nuggets are another team in the NBA's Western Conference that don't get talked enough about. I see Nikola Jokic in that in that list of players that are in the MVP uh, candidacy uh, odds. But when you look at Donovan Mitchell, I think his will to win, I think his leadership on that team, and just really just being a human bucket getter can't go unnoticed. Um, and for most of the season, the Utah Jazz have been in first place. Yeah. I love the Wade comparison, by the way. And I think Donovan Mitchell is probably the better shooter. I think Mitchell yeah. um, might. I, who would you give the edge to defensively, Wade or Mitchell? Because both of them like to get into you. I think it's still very early. Um, and I think you've seen, you, you have a tape of, of Wade, you know, going toe to toe. Uh, with the Dallas Mavericks, with the, the San Antonio Spurs. And I think, you know, it's it's very difficult to make those comparisons with players who are retired versus ones who are stu still there. That, that's kind of why I have issues with, you know, the LeBron James and Michael Jordan comparisons yeah. because LeBron James's career is still in real time. Michael's, the last tape we saw was like in, what, 2003 when he was a Washington Wizard and was still putting up buckets. So, I don't think you can really make the clear comparison defensively without maybe five to ten years in, but mm. I, I think I think Donovan Mitchell has a chance to be special. And what I like about Donovan Mitchell is he was loyal uh, to Utah and signing that extension. And you know, in a, in a in a world where everybody wants to ring chase and also make super teams, he's right there in Utah. I like Donovan Mitchell. I like his chances. And I'll add this: when you talk about the MVP race, the MVP to me is you're, you're the best player on your team and you have the most impact on your team and you're putting up all types of stats uh, that just wow people. And it doesn't matter about Regency. It doesn't matter about, um, you know, super teams. It matters about just doing what you have to do. And I think um, Donovan Mitchell is definitely in that conversation as is Damian Lillard. 
Yeah, I would agree with Lillard, too. We talked about that uh, with Worldwide Wob uh, two weeks ago. He is Scoop B. Joining me, Keith, is Ari betting around the rim. You mentioned the Nuggets, so let's dive into them. Seven consecutive wins since Aaron Gordon joined the team. They've won eight straight games. Are you now seeing a Nuggets team that could make a run again in the postseason? Definitely. And and I make mention of um, Donovan Mitchell in the bubble. The Denver Nuggets knew exactly who they were when they were in the bubble behind the play of Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic. Uh, I, I'm going to make a 90s reference casually. Um, when I look at Nikola Jokic, I feel like Nikola Jokic is, is a much improved Tom Tolbert in the run TMC system with the Golden State Warriors. The point center that's able to get his players involved, except Jokic averages about 25 more points than Tolbert ever did. And so when I look at um, what Jokic is doing in Denver, he literally is their point guard, which is, allows Jamal Murray to just go off in an Allen Iverson sort of way in Denver. Um, and I think that Denver doesn't just have Jokic. It doesn't just have Jamal Murray. You have Aaron Gordon, as you mentioned, who you got in Orlando. I was looking at a stat the other day that, that was talking about assists um, and talking about like how many assists uh, – or for Aaron Gordon in a game. I don't know if it was in a game or this season. It was like 15 or 16 to the point in which, you know, he uh, was traded. And then they looked at a stat where, like, in one game, I think Jokic himself had, like, 15 or 16 assists in the game. Or it was a crazy stat, but it was just talking about sharing and passing the ball. And I feel like Aaron Gordon is in a system where uh, it, it's predicated upon him to do well, and he doesn't have to be – the zeroed in focus because he has such a supporting cast of, of veterans that know what they're supposed to do under head coach Mike Malone. And, and, I, and I like Denver. I like Denver's chances. I like Jokic. Uh, I think Jokic was an MVP candidate a couple of years ago. But again, you talk about teams that are small markets, the Utah Jazz, the Denver Nuggets, the Portland Trailblazers. They're not going to get the attention of, you know, albeit in New York or L.A. or Chicago or Philadelphia. So, yeah, I like the Nuggets, Keith. Yeah, from a gambling standpoint, Jokic now is minus money. He is the odds-on favorite to win the MVP. They are streaking. I said it yesterday, and I've been saying it. If the Nuggets can be a top-four team in the Western Conference, Jokic will win the MVP. Really fast. I got about 45 seconds with you. The Atlanta Hawks, 14-5 and five since Nate McMillan took over. Just give me your, your, your snap reaction to the Hawks and how real they are. About, about 40 seconds. Nate McMillan is the truth, should have never been let go from Indiana, and he is showing why with the Hawks, with a veteran cast that includes Trey Young that has been impacted by Vince Carter, and you add Lou Williams, who feels right at home in the state of Georgia. Lemon Pepper Wing are his friend. Good day, Atlanta. I love it. Oh, my God. So we got Lemon Pepper Wings. We mentioned Dizzy's. We mentioned McKeebs. I, I didn't hear Bogart. We could have thrown out Bogarts or Crebets, right? Pride of <laughs> pride of Hops. <laughs> a little yes, bit. Oh my god. Sir. Scoop, you're the best, man. Love catching up with you. We'll talk again very soon. All right. There Thank he you. is, the great Scoop B. We'll do our best bets when we get back. It's betting around the rim. I am Keith Irizarry. Stick with us.